Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, well hello, my name is Kylie Gore. We talk about makeup, skincare, fashion, music, sometimes drama, sometimes we do vlogs. We do a little bit of everything here on the channel. Thank you for joining me. Now today we have an album review and I haven't done as many album reviews this year, mainly because not that many interesting people have released records this year. Um, I will say this, I didn't do an, a review for Kylie Minogue's Disco, but just TLDR, 7 out of 10. Wasn't my favorite Kylie Minogue record, but also wasn't the worst Kylie Minogue record. It was what it was. Today we are doing an album review of Miley Cyrus's new record, Plastic Hearts. And boy oh boy, I wrote a lot. I wrote a lot for this record. And I'm excited to run down the list of things I have here, the bullet points I wrote down here in front of me for what I feel about this record, what it made me feel, what I liked about it, how I felt listening to it, the emotions it brought out in me, and just generally from a songwriter's perspective, how I feel about the record and of Miley's career. So if you want to know that and so much more, then keep on watching. This is Miley's grand comeback from Younger Now and she is coming and it's a bittersweet to mention she is coming because, you know, it was a project that fell flat and it fell really, it just fell flat. It just, it was a record that fell flat, you know, her life also just felt like it was coming, crashing down on her um, from so many things, from so many headlines and so many stories that were coming out and everything just started to feel like it was crumbling down at that moment and it felt really chaotic and I could tell that it was really chaotic during that time for her and it wasn't easy for her that time and you know it's kind of it's, it's bittersweet to think about she is coming and how that was in a project fulfilled but at the same time you know, sometimes life puts us in situations where we learn something from it and where we grow and evolve from it. And I think that this record is the symbolism of that growth and involvement that came from that period of time in her life. I will always love Younger Now, even though she doesn't, even though she herself doesn't like it that much. I personally love that record because it showcases her country roots. I love listening to her sing country music. And this record provided a much more different approach to her music. Now, Miley is one of those oddities in the music industry who just can blend seamlessly into any genre. She is a chameleon in the industry. And there's very, very few people in this industry that can do that flawlessly. And she is one of them. And this record, I will say, comparing this record to her past two previous works, it is the most cohesive and the most well thought out body of work. Dare I say this is her magnum opus of work when it comes to music. And this record, it feels like something she was meant to do. This is one of the very first times in her entire career, from the music I've listened to from her career, this is one of the very first bodies of work from her that feels like it was meant to be. Like this was what she was born to do. This was the type of music she was meant to do all along. And we could see the signs and the patterns of her wanting to do this type of music throughout her entire career. I mean, she was one of the, she was the first concert I ever went to on her Wonder World tour. And I remember her just like flying on like a motorcycle singing I Love Rock and Roll. And that's how I discovered Joan Jett was through her singing I Love Rock and Roll. She's always hinted at wanting to do rock music. And I think that this this was meant to be. This was a meant to be record. It is incredibly well crafted from start to finish and I know that I think it was last year she had vocal surgery because she had really strained and damaged vocals so she had surgery for that so vocally this is her best work. I will say that vocally this is her best work. Now I'm not sure about the grunting and straining of her voice if it is comfortable or not because personally I tried singing Midnight Sky the way she she does it with a really like, you know, grunting and like straining a little bit more aggressive of a vocal and it hurt. <laughs> it hurt a lot. So I don't know if it's comfortable for her, but vocally, it's one of her best bodies of work vocally, artistically and lyrically as a lyricist as well. I think she just knocked it out of the park. It was an incredible work of lyricism within every single song. and. You know, this, this record felt purposeful. It felt purposeful. It felt like it had a purpose and it served that purpose when the listener 
heard this record. This is the one body of work from her where I feel like she has found her true colors in artistry, where I feel like she has found a genre, not necessarily a genre, but a style of music and a element of pop music that is just it just works for her. It just works incredible for her. And I think she has created an album that is so authentic and so unique. And it's music that nobody could sing it like she does. And that's when you know that somebody has written a great song. That's when you know somebody has a hit song, a hit record. That's when you know somebody knows what they're doing. When they put out a record and you can't imagine it anyone else in the world singing it because they do it so flawlessly and so authentically that it would feel like a disservice and it would feel offensive for somebody to do it because they wouldn't do it the way that this particular artist does and that's what she has found with plastic hearts and you know the evolution of her career is so mesmerizing to see from now till the very beginning from Hannah Montana to then going into pop music with Breakout and the time of her lives to more edgy with Can't Be Tamed to pop mix with rap with bangers to EDM avant-garde with the dead pets and then from country to younger now and a little bit with the Mark Ronson songs and a little bit with She Is Coming and then to full-on rock music and it's very mesmerizing to see just how many phases she has had in her career in such a short amount of time and you know she's very underrated i will say that you know she has had a lot of success and she has had a lot of accomplishments in her career but in the grand scheme of the music industry she's very very overlooked and very underrated which is a disservice to this industry and i will say that i'm gonna say it i'm gonna say it i'm gonna say it this is the first 2022 Grammy contender. It better be. It better be nominated for Record of the Year, Song of the Year, Album of the Year, Rock Album of the Year. It better be nominated. I don't want another The Weeknd snub for 2022, okay? It's her most authentic work. It's her most authentic work. And for her most authentic work, I feel like it deserves many awards. It deserves many awards. It deserves many accolades. It deserves so much praise, so much love, so much hype. It deserves, deserves, deserves everything good. It just does. It is her best body of work and I would definitely not be upset and I would not be mad if this is the root of her career in music because it fits her flawlessly. It fits her like a well-sized fit glove. And my standout songs from this record are Angels Like You, Night Crawling, Bad Karma, Prisoner, Plastic Hearts, Edge of Midnight, and Heart of Glass. I know the last two are a remix and a cover, but they just work well. And she completely dominated the song Heart of Glass. I mean, she made it her own. Like, it doesn't... I can't even... It feels wrong for me to listen to the Blondie version after listening to her version because she just owned the record. She owned the record and she made it her own, which is something that doesn't happen a lot with people doing covers. I can't do that. Like, I can't reinterpret a song and make it my own, even if I try. You know, when I sing covers, I usually like to sing them the way the artist sings them, because that's how it feels appropriate, but she completely did a whole 180 on this record and made it her own. Same with Zombie, and it's it's incredible. It's incredible to see this era of her career because it is the most satisfying era of her career and I think it is the most universally loved era of her career. I have yet to see anybody who doesn't like Rock Miley. I have yet to see anyone. And that is why I give this record the overall rating of 9 out of 10. It is just so deserving of this rating and I think it's an incredible body of work. It deserves every last bit, every last ounce of success it is receiving and I hope that she is one of the very first 2022 Grammy contenders because she truly deserves it and it would be just incredible to see her win her very first Grammy for a body of work that is as authentic and as 
unique as she is. Anyways, that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, give it a thumbs up and comment down below your thoughts and opinions on Plastic Hearts. I would love to know what you think about the record. And as well, subscribe because it doesn't pay themselves. Help us this out. Please help me out. And I will see you tomorrow with another video. Goodbye.